Hi, Fitzebra. So it is nearly the end of our topic of Around Great Britain. So it's time for our story about Scotland, another one of the different countries in Great Britain. And our story is about Katie Morag and she lives on an island, the Isle of Struy, which is across the sea from Scotland. This story is called Katie Morag Delivers the Mail. Wednesdays were always hectic on the Isle of Struy, for that was the day when the boat brought the mail and provisions from the mainland. One particular Wednesday was worse than usual, since baby Liam was cutting his first tooth and both Mr and Mrs McCall were in a bad mood. All right, all right, said Mrs McCall in exasperation. I'll take Liam upstairs to quieten him down. Katie Morag, you take the mail to the houses across the bay. There are five parcels, one for each house. The one with the red label is for Granny. Wow, it's busy in the post office. Pleased to escape, Katie Morag set off. She loved any excuse to visit her granny, who lived all alone in the very last house on the other side of the bay. But it was a hot day and Katie Morag had just stopped for one moment to paddle in a pool beneath Redburn Bridge when suddenly, splash, she slipped on a slithery stone and fell into the water. Mailbag and all. Uh-oh. Katie Morag's dropped all the post. Oh dear, oh dear, wailed Katie Morag, looking at the five soggy parcels. All the addresses are smudged and I won't know which parcel is for which house now. Only Granny's parcel was still recognisable with its red label. Uh-oh. What's Katie Morag going to do? A bit of a muddle, isn't she? Then because she was so frightened and ashamed, Katie Morag did a silly thing. She ran the rest of the way to the other side of the bay and threw a parcel, any parcel, except the red labelled one, on the doorstep of each of the first four houses. Nobody saw her. Still sobbing, she ran on to Granny's. Oops. Well, this is a fine boar you've got yourself into, Katie Morag, said Granny, when Katie Morag had explained what she had done. Still, at least you've given me the right parcel. It's got the spare part for the tractor that I've been waiting for. I'll go and get the old grey lady going while you dry yourself up. Then you can try and sort this whole muddle out. Oh, Granny to the rescue. Granny had her head under the bonnet of the tractor for a long time. Occasionally, Katie Morag heard muffled words of anger and she thought of the angry words waiting for her at home. Then suddenly, with a cough of black smoke, the tractor stuttered into life and they set off to go round to each of the four houses in turn. Oh, is she going to be able to sort out her muddle? The first house belonged to the lady artist. She had been expecting tiny little brushes for her miniature paintings, but the cut parcel Katie Morag had left on her doorstep had two enormous brushes. They're bigger than my painting boards, she said in disgust. The second house was rented by the holiday people. They had ordered fishing hooks from a sports catalogue, but their parcel was full of garden seeds. We can't fish with daisies and lettuces, they complained. Uh, 
the third house, Mr McAster was standing by a big barrel of paint, holding the lady artist's paintbrushes. How can I paint my walls with these fiddling little things? He asked. In the fourth house lived Mrs Bayview. The stupid shop on the mainland. Where are my seeds? Flowers won't grow out of these, she said crossly, waving a packet of fishing hooks in the air. After much trundling back and forth, Katie Morag finally managed to collect and deliver all of the right things to the right people. Everyone smiled and waved and said, thank you very much. Good job Granny could help with the tractor. By now it was getting dark. Katie Morag thought of the long journey home. She would be very late and her parents were so bad tempers these days on account of Liam's noisy teething. Granny, would you like to come back for tea? She asked. Katie Morag half hid behind Granny as they walked in the kitchen door. But to her surprise, everyone was smiling. Liam had cut his first tooth at last and all was calm. Thank you for helping out today, Katie Morag, said Mrs McCall. Isn't she good, Granny? Okay, said Granny with a smile as she looked at Katie Morag. She's very good at sorting things out, is our Katie Morag. And she said no more. Phew. With Granny's help, Katie Morag sorted out all of the parcels. Did you enjoy that story? There are lots more stories about Katie Morag. Maybe you could have a look and find some. See you soon. Bye.